Welcome to episode 50 of Inside Trader Joe's. Uh, let's rewind about four years. Now, if I remember correctly, you said... It's a new five-part series. We'll take yes, that is what you said. Well, that was our intention, but here we are. For the 50th time, let's go Inside Trader Joe's. I'm Tara Miller, Director of Words and Phrases and Clauses. And I'm Matt Sloan, the Marketing Product Guy. You know, Matt, traditionally, 50th anniversaries are celebrated with yellow roses. And gold. A Trader Joe's greeting card would be nice. So would a lot of gold. We thought we'd spend a little gold from our travel budget to get out and talk to our crew members. After all, it's the people in our stores, the crew in stores every day in every neighborhood Trader Joe's across the country, they're the ones making it all happen. Wait, we're going to all 536 stores across the country? Metaphorically, symbolically, you know, pack your bags nonetheless. We're flying from Portland to Portland, Oregon to Maine. But first, why are our crew members so great? Well, this is a really good question for John. Is this the anniversary episode? This is episode 50. So we're, we're sort of like in this weird spot of like not making it like, da, 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 da. like it's not about being 50, but it's like, oh my gosh, we have 50 of these and we thought we'd have five. And yeah. So this isn't the blooper episode or anything like that. It, Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why you have me on. Yeah. I'm John Bassalone, and I'm a crew member at Trader Joe's. Uh, 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 wait a minute. So we're, we know we're not really big on titles around here, John, but yours is actually relevant to this conversation. Around here, they, titles are kind of for our parents, you know, so they have something to talk about with their friends. Um, but if you need my time, yes, I'm uh, president of stores uh, for Trader Joe's. Okay, John, so you spend a lot of time in our stores from Portland to Portland. What are you seeing in stores? What we're looking for is pretty basic stuff and it's pretty simple and we've kind of boiled it down to asking ourselves a couple questions, which is, is this a place where I'd want to shop? And is this a place where I'd want to work? And if the answer's yes to both of those, you kind of feel it and, and know it. If the answer is no to one of them, you might say, well, what, why do I feel that way? And what, what is causing that? And what can we do to help here? But most of the time, the answer is yes to both. And that's been pretty great. From the perspective of a crew member, what, what is it that makes you answer yes to that question? What, what does that environment feel like? It feels very supportive. Like you can tell how the captains and mates are treating crew members kind of by the way the crew members are going about their business and how they're interacting with each other and is their teamwork taking place? How are they being communicated to and with by the people that are there to support them? You might walk into a business somewhere and see a sign on, on a door that says, don't slam the door. And if we saw that sign in our store, I'm not sure I'd want to work here if that's how I'm being communicated. Uh, too. I'm remembering like a big official meeting of captains. And I remember something that you shared with the group at this particular gathering. It was a formal announcement that everyone had permission to be nice. The goal is to hire nice, kind, empathetic individuals and then just turn them loose. And so the customer service uh, training is pretty simple. It's, um, you know, be yourself. We hired you for a reason. We hired you for you. You don't have to become something else or transform yourself into something to work at Trader Joe's. Like you said, Matt, just be nice. Somehow, the internet has become a buzz over time. More than with, usual. <laughs> yeah. With rumors that Trader Joe's crew members are trained to flirt with customers. Yeah, absolutely not. Maybe people aren't used to seeing people just being genuinely nice to other people. I understand that some flirting does take place, but no one is trained. That is just how they are naturally, and that's them being genuine, I suppose. <laughs> There's another idea circulating in electronic places, the interwebs, et cetera, that crew members must acknowledge and appreciate and say that they too like the vanilla ice cream that's in your shopping cart. I think it's because we actually taste stuff and we're fans and it's something to talk about in common. 
Yeah, they are not told to do that. If a customer buys something that's one of their favorite things, they almost can't help themselves but say, oh, I love that too. We don't script on purpose because if everybody, and every time someone came to the store, you pointed to a product and said, I like that product. And did you find everything okay? And every customer being talked to like that, it would just become annoying after a while. So I think it really comes from a genuine place and uh, we don't make them do that. It would certainly feel a lot less genuine if suddenly people were following a script. It feels like we're heading headlong into a world where there's no human interaction at all, where you just stay home, you work from home, you order online, things get delivered to you or you pick them up. Um, or if you do go to the store, you don't really have to interact with anyone. You have self-checkout or just throw the stuff in your cart and walk out because you've already scanned your, your thumbprint or whatever. We are committed to being completely the opposite of that. A shopping experience where people have that genuine interaction with each other and it feels natural because, I mean, that's the world that most of us want to live in, right? Where you can go out and shop in your neighborhood store and say hi to someone you recognize and, and it kind of makes your day. And so the more retailers that want to go the opposite way, fantastic. We'll do it this way and have fun doing it. They're trying to take away all the people and we're just trying to make sure the people are there and can be themselves. And we believe in the power of people. Okay, really the best way to fully understand all of this about being inside a Trader Joe's is to go inside a Trader Joe's. A real Trader Joe's. Yeah. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit the road, John. Well, thanks for having me and have fun out there. Uh, say hi to Captain Cammy in Portland and uh, all the other captains in all the Portlands we have. Sarah, Seppi, Dean. Say hi to all of them for me, okay? Okay. Check, 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 check. We're at our first stop, Trader Joe's in Portland, Maine. We're gonna try to talk to as many crew members as we can. Hi, my name is Sophie. Welcome to Portland, Maine, the real Portland. I've been here for five years. I started as a crew member, and then I was promoted two years ago, April 1st, oh. 2020. And you're like, are and you fooling with me? Yep. Wow. I feel really, really lucky. And I love this store. Why? First of all, I love Mainers. Mainers are so relaxed and they are so kind, but not kind in a way that makes you question whether it's authentic or not. You know, like they're just like, yeah, no, this is great. You know, even like on a day like today where everything is kind of going crazy, everyone has just like, oh, okay. So the registers are down. All right. Well, I guess I'll just wait or I guess I'll just bag up my stuff or, you know, they're they're very just down to earth. Is it because we're at the edge of the world? I mean, I do <laughs> I do think that there is a calm acceptance yeah. of factual realities here that I haven't experienced in all parts of the country. So yeah. it's kind of impressive. Well, I think Mainers are also really self-sufficient too. I think that there's just this like calm that exists that no matter what happens in the world, like we're gonna be good here. Huh. And a lot of them live off the land. There's a lot of, you know, farm to table here. I almost feel like we're doing a commercial for for Maine. This moment brought to you by Maine. What are we going to say bad about Maine so that everyone doesn't move? It no. snows a lot. It snows it's a lot. It's so cold. <laughs> so, so Because you don't want cold. everyone moving here, right? Well, and it's really cold outside right now. So. Oh, come on, you're lying. It's a really nice day today, actually. It's 55 degrees. It gets degrees. above 50 and Mainers are like, it's hot. Where are my shorts? Where are my sandals? So this particular Trader Joe's mm -hmm. is a busy place. Yes, I love that. We just have so many interesting people that there's no like mundane, boring day. Someone always has some sort of topic or, you know, or we have a tasting or the only thing that is consistent is that everyone is going to make the best of whatever happens that day. That says you have a really, really great crew. Wow. Amazing crew. You yeah. need an amazing crew to pull off this much business here. Yeah, we're the only Trader Joe's in the whole state of Maine. So they call, I get a call. Hey, listen, so I'm about four hours away. Just want to check on a couple products before I head down. <laughs> yes, okay, let me. 
to make sure that we have that in stock for you before you drive four hours to come here. Yeah. So if someone does that, yeah. will you put those products aside for them? Yeah. So that it's not different when they arrive in the store? Yeah. I, for those people, very much so. I want to put something yeah. aside That would be them. testing the chill Mainer yeah. attitude <laughs> in a way that we don't want to. Yeah. 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 Sophie, you're the one who answered the phone. Yeah. I uh-huh. don't want to feel that wrath. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, I, I want it. them to drive four hours and be pleasantly surprised. Because they have four day. hours back. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other side of that. Yeah. That is yeah. the super other side of that yeah. story. Yeah. 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 They could make a lot of phone calls. I would eat everything yeah. on the four hour <laughs> drive back. Even the man and orange chicken, I would be like, Just so it's a little cold. cold. It's great. I am sure Mainers have like some sort of oven in their car. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're ready to go. Engine block stove top. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, part of the year you don't need a cooler in the back, right? Because it's true. so cold. Exactly. So exactly. we used to joke, even in Massachusetts when I was a kid, that we had a walk-in freezer in the winter. It was yep. the back porch. Yep. Um, is there anything else that you feel like sharing or talking about or asking or anything? I mean, I could just get on here and be a fangirl of Trader Joe's. Yeah. I love what we do. I feel really grateful to be here, to work here, to engage with the people of Maine. I love that we just spread good vibes all over the country and we sell great food. If you order for Trader Joe's and you're listening, we should just give ourselves a little pat on the back and be like, you know what? We did something good today. It's good stuff for sure. Yeah. So. Thank you so much. Hey. So I had to come in here because my son is a podcast coordinator. That's so fun. Oh, I, what does he, I mean, what, what does that mean? I, you know what? I said the same thing to him. I said, do you work for a radio station? He's like, no, mom. It's a thing. It's a podcast company. And uh, he just absolutely loves it. It is a thing. It's, it is a thing. It is a it's, thing. And it's Podcasts fun. Podcasts are a thing, it turns out. And it's fun to do. How uh-huh. many listeners do you have? Well, it's, it's <laughs> three. Three. <laughs> three. They've just Not downloaded a lot. My parents. Uh, uh. <laughs> Can you just introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kathy. How long have you worked in this store, Kathy? Two years. How long have you worked for Trader Joe's in total? Uh, going in 10 years. I feel like here people are just so much more like chill and relaxed. And like today, for instance, just because we're the only one in Maine, I had my first two customers. Oh, it took me five hours to get here. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Second customer. Oh, it took me four hours to get. And this is just in conversation, you know. And the guy's like, "Yeah, we still have four feet of snow up there, up where I am." I'm like, "Oh my Good god!" Good grief! There's like, like, where are they coming from? The North Pole, apparently. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. They definitely come down for their, you know, the eight jars of peanut butter and you know a bunch of frozen stuff, and you know they definitely come down for a stock up. But I, I hear it all day long. You know, two hours, three hours. And they're like, when's another, you know, store coming way up? And we're like, mm. Exactly. That's probably the best answer. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We just had a, one of our guys just became an American citizen oh, last okay. week. I mean, super cool, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. What would you guys do when that happened? Um, Worked the frozen load. <laughs> All right, there's work Among to do, other things. Right? Well, I mean, everybody just clapped and gave him, you know, and... I'm sure there's a card somewhere where everybody's going to be signing it. And yeah, and things like that are acknowledged. Yeah. Somebody has a baby, somebody, you know, even going to another job, you know, from here, you, everybody's always like, good for you. You know, we're going to miss you, but good for you. I love that. Do you have a favorite Trader Joe's product? Right now, I can't wait for the halloumi to come in, you know? I put it in the air fryer. <laughs> that always laughs at me because I put everything in the air fryer. Yeah, where are my car keys in the air fryer? <laughs> And you grill, grill it you first, grill it? or yeah, okay, cast iron pan. All right, mm-hmm. that seems so Maine, like grilling halloumi. Who would have thought Maine? <laughs> but it feels totally Maine appropriate because it's summertime and it stays light till like mm-hmm. midnight or something. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. you know mm-hmm. you're gonna have a salad with some grilled halloumi. That's right. And then go mm-hmm. out for a walk afterwards because it's still light out. That sounds nice. Wow. Okay. This this conversation has devolved, Kathy, and we are <laughs> so does. we are so sorry. My name is Anna Maria. How long have you worked at at this store in in Portland, Maine? I opened this store, so I've been here 11 years. Wow, good for you. Congratulations. Thanks. What brought you to Trader Joe's in the first place? Shopped at Trader Joe's all the time. I did some catering, small catering. Everything was from Trader Joe's. (laughs) I cheated. I didn't even tell people some of the products. (laughs) I thought I made them. I think that happens a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Secret between us. Mm -hmm. What makes Trader Joe's different? We get in there and find out about the customer. Like, we want to have conversations. We can have fun. 
we can turn anyone's bad day into a good scenario. Like I, my favorite thing is talking to a customer that might be upset, unhappy, and be able to turn it around. Like we have that opportunity. So in 11 years and counting, mm -hmm. have things changed? Have things stayed the same? Well, the store is still fantastic. I think I'm surprised when someone comes in and they say, I, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you guys were here. And I would say, really, I'm so glad you came in. I have so many longtime customers that I know their name. I remember they were pregnant. I, their kids are now seven, eight, nine. So for me, it's just like, it is really like family. Like I know all these people, they know my name. I know their name. I know where they live. You say that rather <laughs> ominously. Yeah. And I'm coming to cater a little event. <laughs> okay, here is, here's a role-playing question. If a customer comes to you unhappy that their favorite product has been discontinued, how do you manage that? Because that happens all the time. It does happen. My favorite products. I usually say that first, like, you know, when the hot and sweet mustard was discontinued, I was devastated, and I was. It's like you're still sort you're of still... carrying a candle I, for Carrying that. a little, yeah, I am. Um, I'll usually try to find out why they buy it, what was good about it, and then try to suggest something else. But yeah, if you open something up and let them try it, yeah. and they think, first of all, I can't believe you opened that up. Right. And then second of all, wow, you picked something that was fabulous and I love it. I'll say you need a two and a three and a four. That's a pretty deep list though. I right? mean, it's like you need four other things to back up. <laughs> I know you like peanut butter cups, but I'm recommending but... four other things. <laughs> Those aren't going to get discontinued. I hope Don't not. Don't go there. I know. Don't go there. Those are Never. Grim, grim days, dark <laughs> thoughts. That would be like we're not making mandarin orange chicken anymore. I mean, things yeah. like that happen because we didn't introduce something just to discontinue it. I mean, we thought it was a great idea, and for any number of reasons, it no longer was that. It wasn't, we weren't able to still offer it. It didn't make sense to continue offering it, so it's gone. So at least letting people know that you hear that and you understand that um, is so important. All right, other than visiting the Trader Joe's in Portland, Maine, what should everyone who visits Portland, Maine do and see? Well, you need to have a lobster roll. You need to see Portland Headlight. What's that? It's one of the most famous lighthouses in the nation. It still works, and there are people, there's like a cranky old guy who's there, and... I haven't seen him. I could be that guy. You could totally be that guy. I could be totally that be that guy. <laughs> I'm just happy to be a part of this store in this state. I love Portland. I love the people here, and I love my job. True story. Hi, I'm Lane. I write the local wine column in Portland, Maine. In a, in a newspaper? Yeah, oh. yeah, in a newspaper. That's real, awesome. A real honest-to-God published newspaper. Good job. Yeah. Great breadth of experience in the wine business. Yeah. And now you're working on a version of that right. here in Portland, Maine. Yeah. At Trader Joe's. So, yeah, I love the store. This is awesome. All right. You know, this is as good as it's allowed to get in quasi-retirement from, uh, <laughs> from the wine biz. I've been a distributor. I've been an importer. I've run a, a winery. I've run an industry. I've done all of the above. You know, I came here with a resume. They looked at me and said, you got to be kidding me. I said, no, I just want to step it down a little bit and have a lot of fun. I want to take that suit, put it in the closet, and say, bye-bye, I'm going to have fun. So you got to retire from the wine biz and still kind of work with wine all the time. Oh, God, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's like a dream come true. The people are extraordinary. The customers are extraordinary. The crew is extraordinary. Wow. I'm sensing a theme here. Right? Yeah. 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 For a lot of customers, what we've been hearing is this is like a real destination, meaning they got to travel. Portland, Maine, in the 16 years that I've been here, has turned into a major foodie city. And that's like proximity to the ocean and all oh, the farm to all table. That farm and... to table. Blah, blah, blah. So this store fits in beautifully. It's pretty cool to make that available to people in such an approachable way. Yeah, yeah, we're approachable. I don't, I don't want anybody to be scared mm -hmm. because wine is scary. And why? I mean, like we, yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a whole separate show. But we, we got to figure out why, and we and we got to stop doing whatever those things well, are. Well, what I do with customers is, what are you doing? Well, I'm having dinner. What's for dinner? And then we pair up the dinner with what we have here. I'm having Chipino. Okay, what's your price point? 
I don't have, I just have to know where they're going because you don't know who's going to walk in this store. We're a destination. It may be a sommelier from New York who wants to spend $55 on a bottle or somebody from Caribou who wants to spend $2.99. Mm-hmm. You don't know. But we can accommodate both of those and everyone in between. That's our goal. Yeah. You know, I, I want it to be a perfect food and wine pairing and I have perfect price point. And I want you to come back and say, you did it. <laughs> do you have a favorite wine in you the store? Bet I oh, do. he's got a notebook. Oh, Look at that. I got a notebook. <laughs> the big favorite. Oh, this thing. This thing is the big favorite. It's um, the Stag's Leap Cabernet, twenty-four ninety-nine. The Muscadet that we have. That's a great deal. I love our our Bordeaux. They're fabulous. Rudier. All all of the Bordeaux are so well selected. Scary how well selected. How long have you worked in the wine business? 45 years. 45 years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Still going. Eh? Yeah, so I'm thinking that you are part of the destination. You are part of the reason people <laughs> make the track. It sounds like it. What a gift to have you in the store. I mean, so thank much. you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank <laughs> you. Good to talk with you. Man, he was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It was so much fun in Portland. We thought we'd fly to Portland. We're starting today at the Trader Joe's on Southeast Cesar Chavez Boulevard in Portland, Oregon. This store really looks like its neighborhood. I mean, there's a great mural of Mount Hood as I'm looking out into the parking lot. It's actually raining outside, and there are these great puffy clouds inside the store, raining pearls. They're they're happy little clouds, Matt. You know exactly where you are standing in the middle of this store. All right, so let's get going. Um, Why don't you start just by introducing yourself, and then we'll start talking. My name's Steven. Worked for the company 17, going on 18 years. Wow. Started in Columbus. Okay, so you're an Ohio native. Mm-hmm. Came to Oregon. Yes, I uh, I came out on a visit, and uh, my brother's in Seattle visiting him. I was visiting a college roommate down in Eugene. I stopped in Portland to see another college friend who became my wife. Oh. <laughs> that was a great trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm from Cleveland. Uh, The guy comes in with a brown sweatshirt. Uh, We start chatting. Turns out, oh, from Cleveland? Yeah, me too. Oh, you uh, went to OU? Yeah, I went to OU too. And then, uh, oh, you lived in Tremont neighborhood in Cleveland. Oh, I'm from Tremont. You know, and then this guy, Don, who becomes my friend. uh, Separated at birth. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He and I have gone up to Seattle a couple times to see a baseball catch the Cleveland baseball game against the Mariners. So you you just met him here as yeah. he, as he was going through your line. Yeah, and he became your friend. Mm-hmm. I've been here now um, eleven years in May. It's just maintained like a cool vibe and like. All right. What are your thoughts on Portland? The people of Portland are really kind. That kind of empathy and caring. Um, sometimes it's a little much. <laughs> when you're at the stoplight and no one's going. I think that's a a, a I thought that was a scripted moment on the show, but it's real. Yeah, it's real. There's a lot of people that care. They moved here because they care. They love the the land, the earth, trees, and uh, you get all enough of those people together. It's, it's, It's an interesting place. All right, good luck to you. Keep, keep up the good work, guys, thanks. Thank you. My name is David. I like a lot of things about Trader Joe's. I really like the way we do things one hour at a time. You go into a big chain supermarket, and the person who's behind the meat counter, that's all they do. Cashier, that's all they do. Here, you change every hour. So you learn to do just about everything. I like the whole Trader Joe's vibe, the coolest place to work. (laughs) One thing I do, another crew member and myself, we have a list up on the bulletin board there about science questions. And if someone has a science question they're interested about, they write it down. And then the two of us kind of research it and then we write a few pages on it and put it back up on the bulletin board. Any particular questions of note of late? I'm I'm really loving this idea. Like, well, why do we yawn? Why do we itch? Uh, One was, what was the loudest sound ever recorded? And this answer has a little bit of an asterisk next to it because the loudest sound ever recorded was the volcano Krakatoa. The nearest measuring station for sound was about 
400, 500 miles away. So they had to extrapolate how loud the sound was. It was louder than anything ever heard before. Louder than Jimi Hendrix at the Isle of Wight oh, Festival. Oh, not even close. Not even not close. Even close. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Kind of love this because this isn't part of your job. Right. Absolutely part of the job. But it is. But that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. It's like you're working with these people. You get to know them. Well, it's not just good for business. It's good for good for your soul. Yes. Like, and not to get too deep into it. It makes you feel better as a human. I mean, really? Yeah. Seriously? It's, I get paid for this? Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time. You're welcome. All right. Hi, I'm Jabrell. Do you have the best smile on your face? Thank you. Man, you're like brightening up my day. <laughs> I'm... How long have you been working at this store? Uh, since October of last year. Okay. Yeah, so All I'm right. like kind of brand new-ish. <laughs> anything that's striking you about products, any favorites, or anything that you're thinking like, whoa, I don't understand. What is this all about? Why are we doing this? It's just so many things sometimes. I'm like, why is this a combination with that? Um, like some of the dips, um, like the, the same, everything. Same with the, yeah, it's just, it's like, yeah. couldn't you just sprinkle it? Yeah, and then the, like the goddess dip. Like it's really good, but I'm like, this is an odd combination of things. <laughs> and there's people yeah. whose entire job it is yeah, to like absolutely. come up with that stuff, right? Yeah, all the like you have like five or six different types of like ravioli. I'm like, wow. What My favorite crazy... is the, the one with the pepper. The cacio. Yeah, pepper. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, uh, the spinach one is really good too. The goat cheese, it kind of missed me. I... <laughs> I think you're goat or you're not. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. not so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite product? My favorite right now, so I like to make shrimp fried rice a lot. So we have the... Uh, it's the Argentinian uh, shrimp and then the Japanese fried rice. And I like to add like the sauteed vegetables. So that's been my favorite. Uh, and now I make salmon on a pita too, like with those uh, Mediterranean um, pitas that we have um, with some of the green goddess sauce and salmon onions. To I like to cook. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess. Um, so it's like a lot of different things I've been finding. And I'm pescatarian too, so. So we need to have people get in tune with the frozen trout. Because mm -hmm. the frozen trout is so good and it doesn't sell very well. Wow. I don't know why. People are, like, afraid of trout. I'm afraid of trout. We have our work cut yeah. out for us. Jabril, we've got some work. It can be so full-flavored mm -hmm. that some people, myself included, get yeah. a little freaked out by how fishy it is. But I think the trout that is in our freezer is more, is more like, in line with the full-flavored nature of the salmon, as opposed to being, like, Fishy, fishy? Yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting because it's really a mild fish. The branzino? Have you had the branzino? No. Uh -huh. That's my kind of fish. It's like mild and flaky, and 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 Matt Matt's vouching for the trout. The yeah. Trout. Trout. No we really problem. appreciate Thank your time you. and and you. your energy. Thank you. Now we are at the Trader Joe's in the part of Portland that's called Hollywood. We got really fortunate here today in this store. We have a whole bunch of crew members who showed up to talk to us. Well, I'm Finney, and I've been with Trader Joe's for a little over a year. At this store the whole time? No, I started in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh. And I've been at this store since February. Okay, great. I'm Phoebe. I'm Griffin. My name's Jonathan. Uh, I'm Kelly. Excellent. I'm John. I'm Russ. I've been with the company going on 39 years. All right, Matt, Russ has been here even longer than you. It's true. All it's right. It's true. Do you have a typical, is there a typical day at Trader Joe's for you? No, I just come in and just mentor a lot of people that need mentoring and help where needed. I sing, I dance, I do everything. And they'll, these guys, they'll tell you that. And you know, <laughs> I, it's, yeah, I'm blessed, yeah. I'm happy. Anyone can answer. What made you want to work at Trader Joe's? Yeah, I was a I was a Trader Joe's baby, and I wanted a discount on those JoJo's. What do you um, mean you were a Trader Joe's baby? In that we would shop here as I was uh, raised on the Joe. Mm, yeah. Prior to Trader Joe's, I worked for the airlines for 24 years. When I got here, being valued as a, an employee and knowing what that looks like made me feel like, okay, I can do better not just for myself, but for my crew members and for the store and for our customers. How about you, Jonathan? I actually feel like I'm part of like a family here and I feel like I can actually, you know, be myself, which you don't really get that at any other company. When you walk past the registers, you can kind of hear how much originality there is in mm -hmm. each approach for each person. Everyone kind of has their own catchphrases and their own ways of interacting with the customers. How about you, John? I went to college for psychology, so there was like a class we took called biological psychology, and taking that class really inspired me to like learn how to 
eat healthy and live a healthy lifestyle and stuff like that. I remember the first day I got like a tour of the store, it was like, I felt really emotional when I walked through there because it was like, I could not find high fructose corn syrup or any like preservative type stuff. So I was like, whoa, this is crazy. These people <laughs> actually care, you know? Yeah, six years later, I'm like almost 100% on the Trader Joe's diet. Do you have any sort of fun customer stories that come to mind? Well, when I was leaving Lincoln, um, I had a customer that we had really great conversations, but I didn't realize I hadn't impacted them, you know, as much as I had. Um, and when they found out I was leaving, I had her and a few others come up to me, give me hugs and cry, and were like, we don't want to see you go. And that's wonderful, but they cared that much about me. Yeah, and that was probably because they felt that you cared about them. Right, we right? had made a connection, yeah. and I haven't really had that in any other job. All right, I think we need to let Switch you guys get back to work. Anything else you guys want to say to us? I love your show. My wife and I have listened to everyone so far. And, you know, we get going and, and, you know, you get that ding, ding, you know, the whole bell. It's pretty nice. It's nice to put a face with the, the voices on, on the podcast. Sorry to disappoint you. No, no, no. Not at all. No. No. Thanks for your time, Jonathan. Thanks so much. Sweet. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you all. Really thank you all. appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody in Portland, Maine and Portland, Oregon. And for the next anniversary, maybe we can go to the Trader Joe's in Glendale. California. Or the Trader Joe's in Glendale. Arizona. Or even the Trader Joe's in Glendale. Wisconsin. Until then, we'll keep making more episodes of Inside Trader Joe's, so please hit that free subscribe button. It is free and worth every penny. Until next time, thanks for listening. And thanks for listening.